We live in a society. That much is true in the SCP Foundation's native universe, or any others. But whenever you live in a society, there is always the threat that someone with malicious intent will come and tear your carefully constructed society down. People like, say, the Joker, the iconic, terrifying, and darkly hilarious clown prince of crime from the world of DC Comics. The Joker has been causing chaos in the worlds of comics, cartoons, movies, TV shows, and video games for almost a century. From Romero, to Nicholson, to Hamill, to Ledger, to Phoenix. And when he's not duking it out with the Dark Knight, he's doing everything he can to prove that the world is only one bad day away from total pandemonium. And to that end, he regularly allies with anomalous entities, people, and groups. That's more than enough to put him in the sights of the SCP Foundation. So today, we're using the trusty Anomatron 6000, our state-of-the-art simulation computer made through proprietary anomalous means, to see how exactly a tussle with the Joker might go. And if there's one thing we know about this grease-painted gangster, it's that regardless of where he pops up, he always needs a mentally ill dude with an incredibly tragic backstory and a bunch of special skills and gadgets to take him down. Enter the SCP Foundation's very own Dr. Jack Bright. It's an unstoppable chaotic force versus an immovable chaotic object. But who will win? Let's crank up the machine and find out. It was pandemonium over at Site-19. Bodies littered the ground. The walls were perforated with bullet holes. Several anomalies had been stolen, and another several had escaped. It was one of those worst-case scenario type situations. And naturally, this meant a guaranteed stressful morning for the unimitable site director, Dr. Bright, who already had enough on his plate trying to organize the annual SCP Foundation Christmas party. He entered the main hall, where a heated confrontation between Foundation agents and a group of heavily armed interlopers had taken place. Jack was flanked on both sides by several mobile task force operatives who had been dispatched to help fight off these foes, but by the time they'd arrived, the intruders had already disappeared. Dr. Bright shook his head and tutted, surveying the room, there were at least 20 or 30 bodies, considerable property damage, and even green graffiti spray-painted on the walls, depicting mostly crude symbols like evil smiley faces, anarchy A's, the Stussy S, and some words we need to blur out, because SCP Explained is a family show. In some regards, it had all the hallmarks of a typical chaos insurgency raid, a group of heavily armed operatives steaming in, guns blazing, indulging in a little smash and grab, and leaving a trail of Foundation operative blood on the way out. But there were certain details here that gave Dr. Bright pause before resetting the typical X days since Chaos Insurgency attack on the break room whiteboard. Dr. Bright waded forward into the carnage, stepping delicately around multiple bodies on the ground. There were many of those strange little wind-up chattering teeth, producing tinny laughter from their tiny voice boxes. There was a funny smell lingering in the air, almost like circus peanuts and cotton candy. But the weirdest thing of all was what happened to the bodies of Foundation operatives themselves. All had pale faces, wide staring eyes, and bright red grins. Why had so many of them died bearing such grotesque smiles? Was this some new anomalous entity or weapon that Bright had never even heard of? When the Chaos Insurgency discovered an anomaly before the Foundation, it never boded well for anyone. That's when Dr. Bright heard something from one of the bodies on the ground, a deep, hacking cough. Dr. Bright immediately ran over to the body in question. It was a junior researcher who'd had the presence of mind to put on a gas mask and play possum as soon as the attack began, leaving him the only survivor and eyewitness to the account as the interlopers had been smart enough to kill all the cameras before the attack began. Huh. <sighs> Thank 343 somebody survived the catastrophe, Dr. Bright said, wiping some sweat from his brow. What the heck happened here, kid? The junior researcher slid off his gas mask, revealing his trembling, tear-streaked face. It took him a moment of steadying himself to speak. <sighs> I, I've never seen anything like this. It was a chaos insurgency raid. I, I recognize all the uniforms from those seminars we needed to take an orientation, but there was this one guy with them. I, I never seen anything like him. Well, uh, what kind of guy are we talking about here? Bright asked. He, uh, he had a white face like a clown with these big red lips and green hair, and he wore a purple suit. And that laugh, God, I'm never going to forget that laugh. When he came in, he released some kind of toxin. I saw everyone who got enveloped by the cloud start laughing like him. Not happy laughing, laughing like it hurt, but they couldn't stop. 
I was able to put on my gas mask just in time, but then the Chaos Insurgency guys with him opened fire. It was ten minutes of hell, and then they were just all gone. And with that, the junior researcher passed out from the stress of recalling his traumatic incident. Bright ordered some of his subordinates to cart the kid off to the medical ward, while they straightened the rest of this madness out. So the Chaos Insurgency had found themselves a new star operative, or some new maniac is out there calling the shots now. Either way, bad news bears. Dr. Bright narrowed his eyes pensively and said, I think a man who calls himself the Joker was behind this attack. What makes you think this, Doctor? asked Sergeant Richards, an MTF officer. The graffiti is definitely a pretty strong clue, Bright replied. On the wall to the left of Bright and Richards were the words, I was behind this, sign the Joker, P.S. <laughs> etched out in the same garish green spray paint. As with any attack on the SCP Foundation's primary base, Dr. Bright needed to perform a debrief with O5-1, the leader of the O5 Council, and discuss the plans for how they want to deal with this new Joker fellow that seems to be buddy-buddy with the Chaos Insurgency now. Dr. Bright sat at the end of a frankly unnecessary long meeting table, with a live video feed to O5-1's undisclosed secure location on the other end. But things were about to get a whole lot worse, because as Dr. Bright explained the situation to O5-1, the last thing he expected in response was for the man to say, Oh God, him again! As it turned out, in the anxiety-inducing spiel that Dr. Bright would receive from O5-1, this Joker had really been making a name for himself in the SCP Foundation's bad books. He'd done several jobs with the Chaos Insurgency, but that was apparently only the start of his work with the Foundation's various most misaligned groups of interest. Foundation informants have reported that the Joker, the moniker they'd need to stick with since seemingly nobody knows the guy's true name, had sold several of the high-value anomalies he'd collected with the Chaos Insurgency to the heartless money men at Marshall, Carter, and Dark Limited and he'd been using the resulting capital to fund himself an increasingly large and dangerous criminal empire. But it didn't stop there. Given the Joker's silly yet deadly clown theme, he'd been using his ill-gotten gains to purchase whimsical weaponry from the Wondertainment Corporation. And to give him plenty of anomalous manpower, he'd been headhunting the various superpowered freaks working at Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting whom he lured over with both higher pay and comprehensive company dental insurance to make sure those big, evil smiles were full of pearly whites. Nobody knew what his end goal was, but it was clear that the Joker was now an established power player amongst the deluge of dangerous groups of interest out there, at the expense of many, many Foundation lives. So, what are we gonna do about him? Dr. Bright asked. Send over the boys from Red Right Hand to give him the uh, JFK special? Don't you think we've already tried that approach, Jack? Please don't insult my intelligence with such an obvious suggestion, O5-1 replied. We've sent numerous hit squads to take him out, but he always seems to be one step ahead. The last one got a tip off that he'd be hiding in a penthouse apartment in Gotham City, some absolute toilet bowl of a town. But when the team arrived, all they saw was a comically large gift wrap present with a little note saying, For the SCP Foundation. Lots of love, Mr. J. Well, that's not so bad, Dr. Bright started to say before O5-1 cut him off with, Turns out the present was filled with highly pressurized napalm. Next time we saw that team, well, let's just say the Joker saved us the standard cremation costs for employee fatalities. Oh, Dr. Bright replied. Yeah, that's pretty bad, actually. O5-1 told him that the solution was exceedingly simple. To defeat a dangerous prankster, you need to send a dangerous prankster after them. Dr. Bright would be the perfect candidate to track down and take down the Joker in the name of the SCP Foundation. But of course, Jack had one advantage that the Joker didn't. Jack was pretty much impossible to kill. However, it wouldn't stop this demented clown from hurting him really, really bad. It was clear that the Joker somehow had a mole inside the Foundation, which is why, for maximum security, O5-1 decided to keep this little mission purely between himself, Dr. Bright, and the Foundation spy that tipped them off to the Joker's current whereabouts, a lair he'd constructed in an abandoned amusement park in Gotham City. Dr. Bright felt tempted to comment that maybe this was a little too obvious, but decided to hold his tongue, because he didn't feel like getting chewed out by O5-1 again today. He would be flown out to Gotham City in a classified Foundation helicopter, so that he could enter with as little fanfare as possible. From there, he would need to track down and incapacitate or kill the Joker himself. It wouldn't be an easy task, 
but at least it would distract him from causing mischief of his own at the SCP Foundation in the meantime. Dr. Wright soon found that they really weren't kidding about Gotham City. The place was a dump. It was like the very worst parts of New York City and Chicago had a dirty gothic baby full of mobsters and flamboyant supervillains. A hotbed of malice, poverty, and unchecked crime. The kind of place where you could probably get shot while leaving the theater with your wife and your young son, even if you were some kind of billionaire philanthropist. It was no surprise to Dr. Wright that a place like this would produce a maniac like the Joker. He'd be eager to leave once the grease-painted freak was defeated. Rather than risking any flashy Foundation vehicle that might draw too much attention to himself, Dr. Bright simply took a cab to the edge of the abandoned amusement park. It was a dark, dismal place, surrounded by a thick mist that really contributed to a general mood of foreboding. Dr. Bright could see figures moving in the mist, so he lifted up his pair of Foundation binoculars, which would easily cleave through the mist and get to the truth of the situation beyond. And the situation was definitely less than ideal. It was a hive of clownish activity on the other side. Weirdly buff henchmen in clown makeup carried large boxes, presumably filled with weapons or stolen anomalous items, while other muscular mutant clowns carrying assault rifles guarded them. Just beyond them, there was a huge funhouse shaped like a giant clown's head. Given the Joker's general lack of subtlety, Dr. Wright assumed, correctly we might add, that this would be where the Clown Prince of Crime would choose to hang his hat. That's where Dr. Bright would sneak in, club him into unconsciousness with a Foundation-issued defense baton, and then call in backup to take this bothersome jester away. It was a perfect plan. Dr. Bright infiltrated the amusement park and began to sneak through. Thankfully for him, he'd learned perfect stealth from years of discreetly putting buckets full of water on top of the doors of some of the SCP Foundation's most distinguished operatives. This made it an absolute cakewalk for him to slip in between the elfish freaks that the Joker had hired straight from the greedy anomalous ringmaster, Herman Fuller. As Bright drew closer and closer to the funhouse where the Joker was most certainly lurking, he wondered why this had even been considered such a challenge by members of the Foundation's most well-trained mobile task forces. Unless, he thought with an internal chuckle, this whole thing was some kind of ridiculous, <laughs> elaborate trap. Though Dr. Bright didn't get to finish that thought, because before that thought was done, a muscular arm brought a blackjack down on the back of Bright's head, knocking him unconscious. When Dr. Bright awoke, his ego more bruised than his head, thankfully, he was tied up at the bottom of a throne as extravagant as it was strange. Atop this throne sat the Joker himself, eating from a plate of Little Caesar's Crazy Bread. Though to a man as demented as the Joker, Crazy Bread was just considered normal bread. Bright shifted on the ground slightly, and saw a familiar yet strange face behind him, wielding the blackjack that had laid him down not too long ago. It was a classic person of interest, the man with the upside-down face, also known as Manny, who'd been head recruiter at the Circus of the Disquieting, and Herman Fuller's right-hand man, with an upside-down face. Manny was an utterly ruthless figure, not above intimidation, violence, and kidnapping to achieve the goals of his employers. It only made sense he'd work for the Joker. It gave him a chance to continue doing what he did best. Jack's thoughts were interrupted by a cackle from the man of the hour. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't Dr. Jack Bright, Jack of all trades, master of getting captured, he gloated. So delighted to finally be making your acquaintance. The ones that they've been sending so far have been so damn boring. It's why I've been sending them back extra crispy! <laughs> Dr. Bright struggled against his bindings to no avail. How do you know my name, you gaudy freak? Jack asked. This got another laugh out of the Joker, who rose up from his throne and began dismounting, holding an ornate walking cane with a tiny gold version of his own face on it for a handle. This guy really had a knack for presentation. I know a lot about you, Jack. Especially not to lay a hand on that pretty necklace of yours, the Joker said. But in the wise words of the great Shania Twain, that don't impress me much. No, Jack, what I find so interesting about you is the fact that you seem to be the only one working for those killjoys at the SCB Foundation who has a sense of humor. The Joker was standing right in front of him now. Jack was at eye level with his fancy black rogues. If only he could get out of his bindings, Jack would complete the obnoxious clown's look by giving him a big red nose. But instead, the Joker looked at Manny and waved the upside-down-faced henchman away. As Manny left the room, the Joker produced a long knife from his coat. Jack certainly didn't like the look of that. Until the Joker leaned over, cut through Jack's bindings, 
and helped him to his feet, even brushing the dust off his lab coat. I didn't bring you here to die, Jack. Well, that'd be a waste of effort. I'd just have somebody to come shoot you and bury your medallion in concrete. The Joker said, patting Jack on the back. No, no, no! I want to offer you a job on the ground floor of my new growing enterprise. I'm looking for a team player, someone with experience, and most importantly, someone who knows how to take a joke. <laughs> Dr. Bryant was confused. This wasn't how he expected this to go at all. What exactly is this enterprise? Dr. Bryant asked. Oh, that's simple, my good man. The Joker said, I'm going to steal up all the anomalies I can, and then use them to make this world a little more interesting. All those other groups I've worked with, including yours, are too focused on consolidating power. Even the so-called chaos insurgency really just wants order. Their order. Me? <laughs> I just want to be the life of the party. I don't need to be the host. And with enough anomalies, I can tear reality a new one and make everyone see the world how I see it. It's the ultimate prank! The gag to end all gags! And in this new world, Jack, nobody will tell you what you're not allowed to do! You'll finally be free, just like yours truly. Jack thought about it for a moment. It was an undeniably exciting idea. Finally working at a job that valued him for his unique attributes. Being part of something that let him be himself, rather than constantly scolding him for doing what they perceived to be wrong. Who gave them the right to decide, after all? Dr. Bright could see the Joker's mouth stretching into a wide grin as he considered it. Could he really betray everything and everyone to make the world a more comfortable place for himself? Well, Jack? The Joker asked. What'll it be? Jack sighed and punched the Joker in his grinning face. The clown staggered back, furious. He yelled, So that's how it's gonna be, huh? Okay, Jack, guess you're just another sad sack. Dr. Bright stepped forward to take another swing, but the Joker grabbed at the false flower on his lapel. The flower squirted a thin stream of highly concentrated acid at Dr. Bright, but the Anomalous Foundation researcher thought quickly. He grabbed and lifted up his indestructible medallion, using it as a mini-shield to block the acid. It burnt his hand a little, but most of the potentially devastating damage was deflected. As Bright continued running towards the Joker, the clown pressed a button on top of his cane, causing the device to turn into a sword. As the Joker swung for him, Jack pulled out his Foundation-issued defensive baton. They clashed weapons with impressive speed and ferocity, but the Joker undeniably had a kind of vicious killer instinct that Dr. Bright didn't. Jack killed to live, the Joker killed for sheer fun of it. Face it, Bright! You can't beat me! The Joker yelled. I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> but gloating was a mistake. It gave Jack a window. Well, the Joker was midway through one of his demented laughs and their respective weapons were locked into a mutual clash, Dr. Bright punched the Joker in the throat with his spare hand. It broke the clown's laugh off into a choking sputter as he stumbled backwards. Seizing his opportunity, Jack kicked the Joker in the chest and knocked him to the ground, clattering his cane sword from his hand. No fair! The Joker spluttered out. Dr. Bright reached into his coat to grab the emergency handgun he brought with him, but it was too late. The Joker, laying on his back, had already pulled his own gun on Dr. Bright and was aiming right at him. The Joker didn't hesitate. He pulled the trigger. Bang! As in the word, bang, on a little flag popped out of the wind of the Joker's pistol. Dr. Bright was bemused as the Jokers just started laughing again. This whole thing really was nothing more than a big gag to this guy, wasn't it? Sorry, Jack, the Joker said, regaining his voice. I couldn't resist. Then the Joker squeezed the trigger again, causing the little flag to fire out with the speed and force of a crossbow bolt. Thankfully, Dr. Bright was able to dodge, causing the flag to stick into his shoulder, rather than his intended target, the heart. But Jack had had enough. The exhausted researcher pulled out his gun and aimed it at the Joker's head. He was bringing this clown back to Site-19 cold. The Joker still laughed even at this. He stuck out his tongue in a childish gesture of spite. I hate clowns, Dr. Bright said, pulling back the hammer and curling his finger around the trigger. He was about to fire when a black-clad hand closed around his wrist. Bright turned baffled to see Batman holding his wrist. Sorry, kid, Batman said, but I didn't get into this game to let anyone get shot. Not even him. Bright was too confused to reply. The Joker gave a performative sigh. Oh, you always know how to ruin the fun, Bats. The Joker groaned. Before Dr. Bright could formulate a reply, 
Batman punched him in the face, knocking him out cold for the second time today. When Dr. Bright came to, both Batman and the Joker were gone to God knows where. Dr. Bright sighed, rubbing his aching head. He really should have taken the Joker's steel, shouldn't he? Now go check out SCP-001 When Day Breaks, Dr. Bright, and SCP-682 vs. Dr. Bright for more of the wacky adventures of Dr. Jack Bright.